This instrument is called Time Speed Acceleration, or TSA for short. It requires a 9 volt plug top power supply, which comes with it. On the other side, there are two inputs. The inputs can either be with 4mm leads or a DIN plug. And this is just a copy of that. It can measure time and there are four different methods for measuring time. The first is an event timer and an event is simply a change in state. Let's just show that. I'm connecting my supply and I would like two wires to act like a switch and I'm going to plug them into either channel, doesn't matter. And if I take these and just touch them on and off, opening and closing the switch, I'm causing an event and changing the state. Let's <coughs> look at one of the two of these timing modes. I'm going to select until I see what I want. The first one is called time interval. Fine. I see what I want, so I press enter and it asks me how many. And simply go through, I'm allowed up to four timing intervals. I want one, enter, go when ready. So if I say go, it's waiting for a change in state. So I will close my switch. That starts it, and when I open it, it stops it. And we should have the time recorded here, and you can see the time displayed there. We also have an event timer, which gives you events themselves. The time interval, which we just looked at there, is simply subtracting the two events to get the interval. We have a fast timer which measures down to tens of microseconds and we have a gap timer. The gap timer works by looking at either of the two inputs and when one of them changes it instantly switches to the other input and waits for the change in state there. So if you had a bouncy switch on one of them, as soon as the switch has shut or opened then the clock starts and the switch can continue to bounce on that input as much as it likes. The software is not looking at it, it has switched to the other input. We can connect to our TSA a light gate and if I switch that on, check that we're aligned and I can see that the light is coming on and off. I can say to my time interval, go again. It's waiting. Again, I have my time. This type of light gate you can get quite far apart. If you have a, bri a brighter bulb that you could use, maybe a, a powerful torch, then you'll get a greater distance still. Yeah, I, it's possible to cycle through this um, might open up the door to do other types of experiments. Don't use a laser because you think you'll get a really big, big distance. This detector of light is sensitive really to infrared and not to light. It means that if you're working near windows, your daylight is not going to cause you a problem. We have another type of light gate called a light bridge and the light bridge is wait a minute, these are fixed and you can see if I cut this on and off the advantage of this type of light bridge is that you can go to an air track or a, a, a runway of some kind and one stand holds it you have no alignment problems disadvantage that's the maximum distance you'll get, that's it. The other 
one that we, we saw there a moment ago. The advantage of this, as we said, you can get them quite far apart. The disadvantage is if you're working with an air track, you've got to get your, your alignment over the bigger distance, which can be trickier. The fast timer measures down to tens of microseconds. And we can take our sound switches, connect them in here, and placing them a metre apart, the sound would come up, hit this, trigger it, start the clock, hit this one and stop the clock. There is a video on our website showing that in action. We have other items that we can connect to the TSA. We have got our vibration sensors in our timing plate. And we can use this in the G by Freefall experiment. Again, there's a video showing this in use on the website. And we have also got an energy track that uses our light gates and we have connect in and we have our projectiles energy and timing apparatus, which again uses the timing facility here. The next item on the menu going through is speed. If I take a runway and a cart on the runway, I can put a mask on it, I can put a mask on my car here, and the way we're able to calculate speed, well, let's select it first, so select, oh, I missed it, let me go around again, this speed, I see what I want, so I press enter, how many speeds do you want, so you can select up to four, I only want one, I see enter, is select the mask size. The mask size has to be a whole number of centimetres. So let's select one, two, three, enter, and now we're go for ready. And basically as soon as I press go it's waiting for changes in state. And the changes in state will occur when the leading edge goes through the light gate, that starts the clock, and when the trailing edge goes through, it stops the clock. Knowing that time, knowing the distance, the software will calculate the speed. The next mode in the menu offered to you is acceleration. In fact, there are two different acceleration modes. The first one gives you the initial velocity, the final velocity, and the time between these, and it leaves the student to calculate the acceleration. And once they have these skills and understand what they're doing, the second acceleration mode simply just gives you the number. Because every, well, if you were doing an experiment with a runway and you were seeing if the acceleration or how the acceleration changed as you went up the slope, Really what you want for each different position is just the acceleration. You don't want to have to go and calculate longhand V minus U over T for each of these. So the second method just gives you the number. So that's Time Speed Acceleration, or TSA. It's a very flexible and easy to use instrument.